Hello. Sorry for the delay. Apparently I have a life, like a newborn or something. Anyway, so I'm going to split this into three parts because my brain goes fast and I get big plans. Um, this is not meant to be a comprehensive tinnitus treatment video. Uh, there's other approaches. I'm a massage therapist uh, trained in the specialty of neurosomatic therapy and personal trainer and done other weird researchy stuff, mystical and radical in doing a uh, little bit into paratheater. Anyways, I'll share what I know and see if it helps. Uh, feel encouraged to direct message me on Facebook if you have any questions or uh, problems or ideas to see if it might make it better results, if it gets better. So the first video is uh, about orientation to the process of what we're trying to do here, or this approach, and uh, mobilization of the different uh, joints and areas that we're working with. So um, first off, if you want to integrate this into your Wim Hof practice, it'd probably be good to do in the forward bend, or forward bend, I don't know why I'm quotation, quoting that um, nerves of the practice. I use the app, I'm new to it. Um, before you do, or skip the push-ups, and then after the breathing, get into the stretching and stuff. So. To start with this process, I'd recommend uh, find somebody that can take pictures of you from a profile view. It might be good to do this kind of sitting and standing to see what you do normally there. Try to sit normally like a relaxed manner, like you'd fall into unconsciously. Not the good posture, but what you're really doing. Um, you could also take videos exploring your range of motion of the main areas we'll be looking at here, the jaw, uh, the ears, a little bit because there's actually muscles that move them for actually kind of orienting for direction of uh, where the sounds coming from but um, that can also affect the the ear area and affect have caused tinnitus issues um, the neck everybody knows the neck and the tongue ah, which actually has all kinds of muscles that can uh, or connects in with all kinds of muscles that can affect the inner ear. There's muscles that go from the inside of the mouth that connect into that uh, eustachian tube, that the auditory canal that uh, can get stuck open or closed and have that weird hearing issue, popping your ears, that kind of thing. Um, so the dynamic motions that you have the most trouble with are probably the muscles that would restrict that or the muscles that do the opposite motions are probably the ones you're going to want to look at the most in terms of massaging and stretching uh, the static posture deviations are probably going to correlate with that but they may be they may show a lot they may not show much so just take a look at it and see if it shows you anything important um, throughout the day as you're doing these practices and working through different areas check in with your that area and discover hey am i holding my chin back do i hold it forward does one side stay tighter than the other and you'll the more you do it the more you do mobilizations you'll open up the area in all kinds of new ways and discover how it interacts with your entire life really um but check in and relax the areas throughout the day that you're focusing on uh, you can also explore the motions throughout the day a little bit that you're struggling with doing. Um, another thing that's good is keeping a journal. It doesn't have to be huge essays unless you like that, but um, handwritten video log or audio log, whatever works for you uh, to track your progress, backslide, forward slide. You know, it won't always be straight ahead, um, but see, see what changes and you'll be able to eventually maybe use certain techniques to mitigate the symptoms or relieve them completely. We'll see. Um, work at your own pace. Try to complete each kind of cycle for an area, uh, doing the massage and then stretching an area, release the muscles, then lengthen them. And then doing mobilizations at the end is awesome uh, to kind of integrate it so you can use it in your daily life and not get stuck in those patterns again and again and again. So eventually you don't have to do this stuff all the time. Um, 
One thing I would recommend is to mobilize all these areas we're talking about regularly, every day, maybe once a week is good for you. Uh, discover what works. So we'll start with uh, mobilization. I'll just go over kind of the basic, uh, an outline of basic movements that uh, a body can do. Um, I'll make parallels between robotics and uh, the anatomical terminology. If you're familiar with one or the other, you'll help correlate and learn a little bit. Um, so, you know, Euclidean geometry, we think up, down, left, right, forward, back. So we'll explore how the different areas we're focusing on can move in those uh, kind of axes, I guess you could say. So the up, down would be like elevation, depression. Uh, the neck can't really do elevation, depression much. Um, shoulders, shoulders can. We care about those a little for this. Uh, the kind of sternum, upper rib cage, you may be familiar, can move up and down in breathing. Wim Hof, kind of a thing. Um, the jaw, this would be the whole jaw moving down and up, which is different than it kind of hinging here. The jaw is a complex joint. It does things, those two things kind of simultaneously. Um, but elevation depression is one, or up, down, forward, back. Would be uh, projection, retraction, projection, retraction, in case you couldn't understand me. Um, left, right would be lateral shear. So the neck could do the forward back one too. You may see people get stuck like that a lot. Or like that, looking proper with their good posture, whatever. Um, jaw can get stuck either way, want to loosen it up. Uh, left, right, lateral shear. Neck can do that too. Usually when you're getting started with that, it helps to let the shoulders move with it and the whole spine and then you'll get better at kind of isolating as the upper and lower cervical regions get mobilized and loosened. Um, roll could be flexion extension. So in robotics they call it roll, but flexion, extension for the jaw. There's a little bit of the elevation depression happening as well. I can't exactly separate it perfectly, but I've developed a little bit of an ability. Um, yaw in robotics would be rotation. For the jaw, that'd be one side back, one side forward. That's difficult to do. Um, I'll try. Pitch would be side bending. Much easier with the neck. Even the rib cage can kind of do that. You see some people with one rib cage higher than the other. More common than you think. Shoulders can do that too. Um, jaw that's harder to do would be like squeezing here and pulling down here. I'm better at it on the left than the right. I get a little stuck up here. Anyway, so those are the mobilizations. Explore those for the neck, the jaw, and or the cervical spine, the jaw, and you can do upper rib sternum if you really want to uh, help loosen up the associated area with the neck and shoulders, fine too, um, but again, not our focus area. Um, tongue is another area we're going to look at, so uh, it's not a joint, there's no bones in the tongue, but you can stick it out, eh. protraction, pull it back, retraction. I guess that'd be like rotation, um, flexion extension. Technically, you can kind of rotate it or pull it all the way to the left, all the way to the right. I'd stick with the uh, out, in, left, right, up, down for the, for the tongue there just for simplicity's sake. Uh, yeah, so that'll end the first video. Let's, next video will be massage techniques and uh, how to kind of do that for each area. Stop.
video too. So I'll show you some self-massage techniques. Um, again, the main areas we're looking at are the jaw. We'll also look at the ears for massage, stretching kind of too. Um, tongue and neck. All of that fun stuff. So, cat, no, don't mess with it. The kind of integrative and exploratory techniques were the mobilization and then discovering your posture and becoming aware of that. Don't scratch, I love you, but don't scratch the camera stand, please, thank you. Um, treatment techniques would be the self-massage and then the stretching. The mobilization would be more integration, so you don't have to keep doing this every day. You can become self-aware of this level of reality. Oh, oh, oh. Um, main massage techniques you can use, compression, pushing, friction, little stroke. Notice I'm not really gliding over the skin. You can go with the fiber direction of the muscle or cross it. Cross it tends to be a little nastier. Um, myofascial release, which is a big fancy term for gliding across the skin with no lubrication. Uh, there's kind of two general ways I understand of doing that. One is kind of engaging the skin and then taking it to a tension point. And then waiting for the tissue to slowly rene release underneath. The other way would be more aggressive. It kind of addresses the superficial area of the skin quicker, but it releases more heat quicker. Um, and that'd be gliding over the skin. Um, you can see it's probably a little redder there than it is over here. Uh, then gliding, if you want, you can put lubrication on there and glide over. I don't bother with that when I'm working on myself generally because I can get the most out of the compression, friction if I need to, and then the myofascial release. I, I get plenty there. Um, myofascial release is especially powerful in some instances, but it can be really intense too. So take it at your pace. Um, massage tools, your thumbs are good. You'll discover how to use them more strongly, but generally you wanna keep them aligned and be pressing through with your shoulder instead of using your finger muscles. Sometimes it'll be necessary. Uh, take it easy. Don't kill your hands to really get into an area one day because then you'll have to rest and not do anything for the next week or something and stretch out your hands and yada yada. Um, so take it easy on yourself. Listen to your body. Um, heel of palm is also a good one. I don't know where you, maybe here. These are smaller muscles, so I'll generally be using thumbs and stuff, but explore, use what you like. Uh, knuckle is another good one especially if you're, the tip of your finger isn't as good at staying straight. I did a lot of restaurant work before uh, doing massage, so I kind of learned how to put a brain in every finger joint. So, I don't know, I nerd with my hand motions, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's that. Next, the main muscles we want to address in each area. For the front of the neck, uh, the main ones would be the platysma, the muscle that does this. So it runs from kind of just past the jaw here into the cheek all the way down to like shoulder chest area. So I'll take this off so I can, sorry for the scratchiness, address it better. Uh, the best way to work with this that I have been taught is pinching. So you kind of pinch it and you want to get enough that you really get to it, but you don't want like the muscle underneath. So like a, a good bit of skin. If it's really hard to pinch, that means it's probably tight and it might be an area to focus on. So explore all that area from kind of the back of the jaw here, just compressing, or you can do some compression with opposition. So my fingers are kind of doing that kind of motion. 
which is more difficult. So I'd start with compression. Focus on the area you're working on. Maybe close your eyes. Laying down or sitting where you can relax your head is a great idea. And just explore all that area. Wait for it to release a little or hold it for a few seconds and then move on. You choose how intense you want to go. If you like it to be super intense, pitch the crap out of it. But you don't have to. Just proceed at your own pace. Um, if you get any areas that like trigger the symptom, the tinnitus that you're uh, feeling or other pains or weird sensations, that's called the trigger point. Just hold it and breathe. Uh, should release in 8 to 12 seconds. If it is quicker than 8, relax. Or uh, go a little harder next time. More than 12, maybe a little less pressure next time. Uh, so the platysma all through here. In the hyoids lie kind of from this bone, this hyoid bone here, upper, middle, throat, all the way down to under here. I'll just show you a basic technique, a couple basic techniques for addressing them. Um, first one to get, well, we'll show the attachments last because they're nastiest. Uh, just take your fingers and kind of push them onto your throat. Could be really uncomfortable for some people. With little friction strokes. They're, if they're stubborn and they don't really respond to this well, after maybe a few days or a week, try the myofascial gliding. If you have oily skin, you may actually need to dry it off with like a paper towel or some toilet paper first. If you have a beard, it can be really nasty. But friction, kind of just on the side of the throat and then kind of right on the front. So try that all the way up until you might feel a little bone, kind of where the, the muscles under the chin jut in. That's going to be about where the hyoid ends, where the hyoid bone is. And then you have what's called the infrahyoids below it and the suprahyoids above it. For the suprahyoids, just kind of take your thumb maybe. Or you could use your fingers, I guess, but that's probably a weird wrist position for most people. Um, and just dig into that area. Sorry to talk and do them because they're used in talking. Kind of go into the meat of it. There's lymph nodes and stuff if you feel a really hard nodule. Maybe don't press on it too hard, but shouldn't be too worried about it. I wouldn't be. If you're doing the Wim Hof stuff, you're affecting your system, so or the the immune system, so you're probably good. Um, so that'd be for the hyoids. To get the attachments down below, it's kind of a weird one. I'll show you from the side here. So kind of like collapse the chest in, take a finger, jab it into the base of your neck, and then you're going to curl under, exhale, and do that kind of motion. So, it's pretty ouchy for most people. So try that a few times. Uh, for the suprahyoids up here, you can take your thumb and kind of dig on the inside of the mandible, the jawbone here, from the angle back of the jaw. This would be cross fiber friction. So the muscles are kind of going radiating out to the jaw. Lots of good stuff right behind the jaw. And explore all that. Um, you can do compression or the friction with fiber or cross fiber or some good techniques. But feel free to do uh, just the gliding if it's really sensitive at first. So that'd be the hyoids for the front of the neck. For the side, there's a few different muscles we want to look at. First one would be the SCM, sternocleidomastoid, but SCM is a lot easier to say. Goes from here, you can see it kind of there up to the side of the neck under the ear. 
So turn to find it, maybe grab it and then re relax and pinch. If you feel a strong pulse underneath your finger because the carotid jugular uh, vessels are kind of carotid and jugular vessels are nearby there. That's not perfect terminology, but whatever. Give it some pinching. You can also do some compression with opposition. If you get lightheaded while you're doing any of these, just lay down, especially this one. So if you happen to pass out, you don't clunk your head on something. And you can dig in at the attachment points. Again, if you find any areas that trigger the sensation or other sensations spreading out or s separate from where you're working, trigger points, eight to 12 seconds, breathe, relax. If it goes down in that time frame, cool. Next one would be scalenes. They're kinda, there's three of them. So starting here, they kinda go to about between that upper trap area and the SCM. So they're right on the side of the neck, kind of the lower. They help pull us into that chronic upper chest breathing pattern and side bend and resist rotations, other, other stuff. Um, so take your thumb and there's nerves that come out between some of these scalenes. So be careful if you get weird, jolty, nervy sensations, move, don't press there. Move a tiny bit. So to get the anterior scalene, come in from like behind the SCM and just press kind of back. That helps you stay away from the nerves directly. And it's kind of like upper middle neck down until you're pushing on the rib cage. Pre Again, compression and friction are good either way. Check in with your breathing. I'm talking a lot, so it's a little interrupted. Middle is in the middle. Uh, take a little kind of diagonal forwards approach. You can also use your fingers from the other side. Holding for a few seconds each. I'm going faster, so you don't have to watch a forever video. You become aware of tensions there. And learn to relax it. Posterior is just a little further back. You're kind of diving under that trap muscle here. Just a little bit. And it sits further down here. So you're just pressing in there. You might hit other muscles too. Or just getting a good general overview. Get that to release, a little friction maybe. So that'd be the scalenes. Then we could look at the levator. That one might be a little harder. We're not gonna worry about working it too hard, but we'll stretch it more. Uh, it sits a little further up, but in that kind of further back area. So on that side of the neck, you might feel some bony bump there. Kind of sit just on the back of that and press in just below the base of the skull on the side, below the ear there. Give it some pressure. I'm going fast. You go slower. Again, you can use the other hand, kind of digging in there. Just use whatever pressure you need at the moment. I'm trying to show you guys. Uh, another one on the side of the neck, kind of in the back, goes into the shoulder, the upper trap, starts up here at the head. You might be able to grab that, you might not, either way. Start where you can get it. This one can often refer into the head or neck. So you'll probably feel great after this, regardless if it works your tinnitus or not. Other hand might be good too. 
and you can take different angles that works better for you oh that's a good one again compression compression with opposition you could glide along it too that's that's cool too I'm a fan of compression next for the jaw we're looking at a few different muscles here first one will be the masseter on the side kind of from the base back of the jaw to the kind of cheekbone area here kind of running that way so I'll explore with my thumb the attachments if you want to find it just clench your jaw and you'll be able to feel it pretty good you can do some compressions the opposition I mean, compression, friction, rather, friction stroke. Or gliding, you put a little lubrication or a myofascial release. Ugh. Should do this side too. Or cross fiber. Then you got temporalis, kind of like a fist sized muscle above your ear. It kind of runs from where the jaw goes in there, under this thing, and then fans out. So explore again, clench, pulling your molars together a bit helps get this one. That can help you outline it and then just press in. I like to use my thumb. You can use fingers too. One thing to note when you're sitting, pressing here forces tightness here. Otherwise, you're doing that. So don't get, you know, you can hold it with the other hand or lay down on your side. A little easier, a little more relaxing. So explore that with whatever tools work for you. Then we got tongue. Um, I'm actually going to show the tongue in the next video. I left the, the tools I'll need to, to grab it. You need a little bit of gauze to hold on to the tip so you can squeeze it. Um, but those are the jaw jaw muscles there. Back of the neck, two main regions. The suboccipital at the base of the neck here, kind of like C1, C2. These are little tiny muscles that like to give you headaches. If you got chronic headaches, might be a good area as well. They're small, so gliding is probably going to be difficult, but compression, compression, or uh, friction are going to be your tools of choice here. And just feel kind of the whole back area there and explore both sides. And those will probably be a lot easier to get to when you're not sitting or standing and able to relax better. Uh, then the posterior cervical region, which is a broad term for a lot of muscles because it's complicated because anatomy. Um, right down the spine. Just pressing in there. I like to use my hand from the opposite side, pulling with the fingers. And try different angles. You can also try different head positions and you'll get different different releases. Uh, last area would be the ears. Again, I said the muscles that move the ear just a little bit. Some people can do it consciously. So there's one that kind of comes through here. You can generally do myofascial work there. Just kind of gliding away. It's nice to pull the ear and work there. And there's one kind of coming up here. Nice to pull the upper ear right above. Ooh, that's that's fun. And then one right behind. That one's not too bad today. 
Another way to, no, no, I'll show that in the stretching video. Never mind. All right, so that's the end of video two. Basic massage stuff. Uh, have fun, explore on your own. All right, sorry about the quick cut off last one. Uh, phone died, thought it was charging. Apparently that outlet does not work. So uh, we were about done with the quick results, stretching, massage combos. Um, so I'll show tongue stuff. Uh, I like to use these little gauze pads uh, in my massage practice, but I mean, a tiny piece of cloth or rag that's clean, whatever. Um, the point is you grip the end of the tongue with the surface and hold it, and then you're gonna be pinching it in different ways. So I'll show you. What we do there, in massage practice, I'm using gloves or uh, like medical gloves, but here, as long as your hands are clean, you're good to go. Uh, you can use gloves if you want to, it's just ridiculous. So open, you can get it wet if you want to. The, the cloth here doesn't, doesn't make much of a difference. Uh, I like to unfold it to this, about this size. and. Mm grip the end it's gonna be hard to talk so I'll just demonstrate all the massage then talk about it that one I'm squeezing sideways from as far back as I can reach up forwards and I'll squeeze down kind of in different areas along the width Actually, I'll just press straight down it first. Your eyes may water while you're doing this. That's my thing. Other people get different things. As long as you're not feeling too weirded out, go for it. Pinching and pushing straight down different spots. You can also drag along the base. Oh. Generally, like three sets of three in each kind of place or stroke direction location is a good uh, pattern or severity you can start just with like three in each line and then increase it um, yeah so that's tongue passive stretching for tongue would be like Active would be you can actively reach and pull, and that just helps you with something like tongue. If you don't think of it as muscle you can work on. So it's probably good to do both at first lightly. Slowly venture through just like a three strokes each place and then stretching each way.
one thing to be aware of. The, the lingual frenulum, that piece of tissue that kind of sits there, it gets cut on people's teeth sometimes, it can be painful, so just be aware of that and don't do anything that's going to mess you up. Um, but that'd be tongue work, pulling it different directions. You can twist it too. If you can get further back, you can grab it in different places and get more, but that's good. Um, obviously, after you've set it down, probably don't use it again, unless it's like a really uh, sterile area. Not that your mouth isn't a big cavity of germs anyways. I mean, stick food in there all the time. Stuff you wouldn't put on your body. <laughs> so it's kind of funny that we're so delicate with it. But Common, common sense. I like just put it back in the package and throw it away. So that's tongue. Uh, some theoretical Wim Hof ideas that I've experimented with a little bit that if you like, you can try. Um, two basic directions here. Depressurize the cranium by exhaling all the air. Then relaxing head and neck as best you can and sticking the belly out. So Lock throat. So you're kind of depressurizing. This works better for me when I'm laying down, a lot better, uh, but I'll show it standing up. And then once you've achieved that, or while you're doing your holds, you can Stretch the neck, stretch the jaw, pull the ears, tongue, I re just realized now that's going to be really hard, I haven't played with the tongue yet for that, um, but those would be other ones. You could also pressurize the cranium by inhaling, And moving the neck, jaw, ears around. So those would be uh, some I've played with a bit. I haven't done a really comprehensive approach to it. Um, again, I'll, I personally experience some occasional tinnitus while I'm doing the exercises or every once in a while uh, on my own. Um, but yeah, give it a shot. If you have any questions, uh, send me a direct message so I can answer them. Uh, in person. I mean, you could post it on the page. It'll just be easier for me to track if it's a direct message. I don't have to scroll through all the different posts on the page that happen fairly frequently. So good luck. Wish you the best. Enjoy discovering all these areas of your body more in depth and uh, hope you can get this feeling better. Peace.